Hey girls, uh, I'm still at school. It's uh, Wednesday, 3.14 p.m. and I just finished grading actually the exams and um, the highest score was a perfect score and the lowest score was a zero. So we had a really, really big range. But something was kind of driving me crazy and it's just this idea that we can't set up the problem so that we can actually solve it properly. So I'm gonna go through this as fast as I possibly can and get through as much as I possibly can. Um, question number one is a solution of calcium. Now they said solution Solution, right? So I'm going to assume and I'm going to write Ca plus 2 in aqueous solution. The reason why I went ahead and I said that this is charged is because if it's a solution of calcium, I'm, I'm assuming that calcium has been dissolved in something like water, so it will be in its ionic form, okay? And it's added, so I put Ca plus 2 added to magnesium chloride, and we should know by now magnesium chloride is MgCl2. I don't even know if you can see this. So this is a single displacement reaction, okay? And those of you who already looked at the activity series <coughs> found out that it's fine, it can work. Um, and what I'm gonna go ahead and do is bop out my magnesium and put calcium in its place. So I'm going to wind up with a magnesium ion floating around in aqueous solution. Oh, excuse me, I forgot to write here. Solution of magnesium chloride. So this is also aqueous. So, so far everything is aqueous, um, plus my product is calcium chloride, CaCl2. And now if I look at the solubility rules, I'm going to see that calcium chloride, all halogens are soluble with a couple exceptions like silver, for example, or uh, lead too. Now this is, calcium is not one of the exceptions, this is soluble, so I'm going to write AQ for everything. So I don't even have to go to the next step and write the, the uh, ionic equation. Every single thing here is aqueous, which means that every single thing here is going to split apart, which means that every single thing is a spectator ion. So what are the spectator ions? It is calcium, um, magnesium, and chloride. Okay, so that's the answer to number one. For number two, they said solid zinc strips. So because it's a solid, it's not something dissolved, zinc solid, and I am assuming that the charge is zero. I went ahead and I wrote it in there, okay? Um, they're not telling, anyway, it's added to a solution there, plus, so now I know the next thing I'm adding is going to be aqueous, so I'm gonna go ahead and write in aqueous, okay, and it's copper two sulfate. So that's copper, okay, Cu, with a plus two charge, and sulfate with a negative two charge, so these cancel each other out, okay? What is the reducing agent? Now again, we have another single displacement reaction. <coughs> I told you in the test to just assume that everything reacts, but if you were to look at your activity series, you would see that yes, this will, zinc will displace copper. Um, and my product is going to be copper um, all by himself. So I'm going to put a zero charge and Zinc is going to be zinc uh, sulfate, okay? So um, what is the reducing agent is the question. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, look, zinc started with a zero charge, right? And now I can't really see this color. Zinc started with a zero charge, and then he wound up in this compound now here with the plus two charge. So from zero to plus two, some of you guys did a really good job here. You said zinc uh, lost two electrons, therefore he is oxidized, because oxidation is loss, remember oil rig, therefore he is the reducing agent. A lot of you guys, I asked for the reducing agent, you told me copper, which was reduced, but remember, the guy who gets oxidized is the reducing agent. So that's that. Um, then for number three, I didn't have to, a lot of you guys really had a hard time with this one. I said if AB aqueous plus CD aqueous makes AD aqueous plus CB aqueous, is there a net ionic equation? Well, let me write out this ionic equation. AB is a compound that's aqueous, so it's gonna be, I'm just assuming that the charge is plus one. It doesn't matter, because this is a fake compound anyway. So I'm gonna say A plus B in solution. Again, I should write aqueous, but just to prove a point, I'm not gonna keep going plus C plus D makes an A ion plus a B ion plus a C ion plus a D ion. When I actually write the ionic equation, I wind up with every single 
uh, element all by itself. So every single element is therefore a spectator ion, therefore every single, there is no net ionic re reaction. A lot of you guys lost a half of a point. Now those of you who simply wrote no got full credit, but those of you who wrote no and then said because everything reacted, I don't know what, I don't know if that was a simple mistake, I don't know, but it, what concerned me was so many girls wrote that. So many girls wrote, no, Miss Dina, there's no net ionic equation because everything's reacting. You guys, when you, <coughs> when you cross out a spectator ion, that means that he is not reacting. If I cross out A, that means that A is not reacting. So if every single species in my equation is a spectator ion, then that means that none of them are reacting. Doesn't mean that everyone is reacting, it means none of them are reacting. Okay, um, really fast for number four, I think we might be running out of time because this video is, YouTube doesn't let me upload it if it's past a certain time limit. So anyway, calculate the new pressure of a gas. Now, again, I like the way some of you guys set this up. Um, even though it's a very simple problem, I prefer you to write P1 equals 4.5, excuse me, P1 equals 2 atm, um, and volume 1 equals 4.5 liters. Okay, this is given. Volume 2 is equal to 3.2 liters, and I want, wanted is volume 2, okay? A lot of you guys also messed up on this one. What is the relationship between pressure and volume? Um, someone really amazing actually wrote Boyle's Law. Thank you. <coughs> um, anyway, the relationship between these is inversely proportional. Um, there's many different ways to solve it. I don't care which one you want to do. What I care about is at least have the correct equation. P1V1 equals P2V2, for example. Um, or some of you guys wrote like P1 divided by V2, which is the same thing. You can rearrange this formula any way that you want. When you, when you rearrange it though and you plug in the numbers correctly, um, you should wind up with the volume 2 is equal to 2.8 atm, okay? And it's two significant figures because we have two significant figures um, on both of the givens, okay? So, um, I did give credit, but the biggest mistake a lot of you guys made is you used the right formula, but then you plugged in the second pressure, excuse me, the second volume for the first, or you did something backwards. So again, write down your givens, write down your wanted, write down your formula, and then plug things in. It, it just saves you from making careless mistakes and losing points for no reason. Okay, last, which gas law relates temperature and volume? The only thing I wanted you to say was it's Charles' law, okay? Charles is the dude, and remember we talked in class, he, he's the one drinking Coke, okay? So anyway, it's Charles' law, okay? And the only thing that I wanted you to write, if you explain it mathematically, was tell me, write down that temperature is directly proportional to volume. So if one increases, the other increases, okay? I know that I don't have enough time to cover number six, which was the big problem, but <clears throat> I'm going to just start by saying read the question more carefully. A lot of you guys were just... Um, stumping yourselves because to begin with you weren't really paying attention. Now in class we were giving you um, the enthalpies of formation. Here I'm asking you to calculate the standard enthalpy of formation. Um, this is called hexanol, excuse me. Uh, so I want you to calculate the standard enthalpy of formation of hexanol and <coughs> I gave you the standard enthalpies of combustion. What does combustion mean you guys? It means <coughs> It means that something is reacting with oxygen, right? If I say combust, it means it's combusting in oxygen. And I was a little bit disappointed um, because actually the day before this exam, we did several combustion reactions and everyone had no problem with them. So I was, I, you know, I was a little bit disappointed that you guys didn't catch that hint. But anyway, I'm going to make a separate video just for this question and we'll worry about it later. For now, if anyone was super curious about what the answers were to the exam, just to kind of get a feel on what you did or how well you did, these are they, all right? So good luck, you guys. Have a good weekend and inshallah, I'll try to post more videos soon. Once I figure out how to stop this video. Alright, bye guys.